All right, thank you for staying with us. Let's talk about something else here, and it's about the BBI parliament option. We know now the parliamentarians are mulling that option as we speak. They're going to amend the constitution through the parliament after BBI court huddle. Well, the Speaker Muturi welcomes the bid by MPs, but he's saying that they, see they must have the two-thirds, which is mandatory number. 13-member team said he's seeking to isolate the issues that need to be to need urgent action. Court of Appeal is said to hold a planning session for the BBI case on Wednesday. Honorable Maure, are you concerned when the president himself takes to the podium and says that he is confident that they will win the BBI appeal and yet this has not even been heard yet? Well, I want to loud the hope that we will win. We meaning that those who are proponents of BBI, I am one of them. So <laughs> it's good to state from outset. Now, the issue we are dealing with, when the president says that he is confident of winning in the Court of Appeal, it means that we have faith in the judicial process. It means we respected the outcome of the Court of Appeal. We did not agree with it. And now, when we say we agree with it, it means that whatever the outcome comes out, we will continue with the spirit that we are going to have a referendum, that we are going to have the changes that are envisioned in the BBI, and that the court ruling was a danger in very many ways because a danger in the sense that when you have the will of the people, you don't go and uh, make a ruling that comes counter to the will of the people when they want to do the changes, it is only good to ask those who you are uh, trying to assist to go and demobilize and vote now for that document. Yeah. Yes. Dr. Nikal? All right, let's bring in Gujiri on this. But you see, w what members have been saying, yeah. especially people who have been called uh, Tanga Tanga, yeah. the team of Ruto, all through we have been saying this thing can be discussed yeah. and we can do some amendment. Yeah. This thing, even the, we have wasted a lot of time. There were just few things we were saying. This thing can be discussed. Yeah. And can you give Kenyans or maybe even the parliament to discuss those few things? Yeah. Then we can just go ahead. In fact, when BBI was launched, there's a time we said in the parliament, all of us, we don't need to use a lot of money taking around to the assemblies, taking what, corrupting people there. We had said, let it come in the parliament. Yeah. Then we agree, instead of using all that money, we were saying that because we knew the country has no money. We, we are going to amend. Now we have gone back to the same, the same place. Yeah. And let me tell you, nobody, oh, even the group of Tanga Tanga, have been, been told that they are rejecting the BBI. No. We have been saying, can this thing be opened? And I made some few things which are there. Yeah. For example, I would say that uh, maybe the other uh, amendment people wanted to do, maybe it is maybe two or three. You remember the other constitution before? We said 20% were not good, but we agreed. Let's pass it, then we shall see how we are going to amend it. We did not touch that yeah. when we came now to this one. Mm. And we could have started there saying, what about the 20% which we left? Yeah. Can we start there now? And go ahead yeah. but no. when it came that it is crossed and even the words have been used no forest no forest no comma no discussion in fact even to take the parliament parliament has no role of this those, those languages yeah. messed the the, the bbi mm. there's something very good everybody in kenya would like to have for example we know we have a problem with the cdf yeah you know that we were taken the court and they actually, the, the orders were given. The time of Mongang, you know that. Then we changed it. We changed to be the uh, national government project. Then, now it is in the court again. And it might be removed again. So some of those things are in this constitution. They are good to put in the constitution that anybody who can come cannot touch about the, the CDF. They are good things. <laughs> but the small bad issues which are there can be discussed friendly and we can finish this because everybody won't change and the law is there that after 10 years we must change the constitution yeah. so it's only the approach i think 
it was not followed properly. Okay. But if no, it was no, followed no. properly, I, I and if people come back, back yeah. now... Let, let him finish, Maori. I'll come to and you. And if people come back now yeah. and maybe come in the parliament, yeah. I don't know how it will come because it was drafted that the parliament has no rule, but if it can come yeah. and people sit down, it's something very, very, very simple because okay. we don't have time. Okay. Remember, if you say that it's going to the now to the people, to the Wanjiko, yeah. there's timeline. We have here border review. We have election. Yeah. We don't have money in the country. We must consider all those things and see okay. what is the easiest thing to do because you don't have money. Yeah. And how should we do it? It's yeah. very simple. All right. Honorable Maure, you wanted to do a rejoinder before I bring in Baraza? Yes, very quickly, I can uh, want to put it that uh, there will not be no problem of money because we are not doing a, like a general election. It's just a simple referendum, one. Two, the issue that we are raising is about members of parliament who purportedly all of a sudden have seen the road to Damascus and they want now to have an initiative by parliament to, to be able to to adopt or like the changes they have been fighting from March 9, 2018, when we had the, the hardship. The BPI has actually been a product of the hardship. And group, our major part of the political team, the yeah. one uh, Honor Kemani is calling it Angatanga, has been very hostile to BPI from the, from the beginning. But then all of a sudden, they want to come and say, oh, we are very patriotic Kenyans, we are very good people, and now we want to have this thing and obtain that. Actually, they want to intercept or hijack the, the process and they take it to parliament. And if you want to you send the example of the 1997 um, IPPG, I can give you very good, accurate uh, institutional memory. I was there. We had actually lit the streets of this country. And the government then, Moy was very swift. He realized that if he goes by that momentum, what he may have, it may be out of control. Then he intercepted the process and brought it through parliamentary process, and it never actually became anything you can write home about. It, it, just, it was a ceasefire. Yeah. Now, the other document that came in 2010, it was not a ceasefire. It is the same thing that had been postponed in 1997 yeah. that was actually actualized in 2010, which is a very angry document with a lot of contradictions, like the one is, uh, was, was talking earlier when he was talking about public participation. You have public participation, and then you have a legislature who is supposed to, under Article 95, yeah. the representation or the representative of the people. You go to represent the people, but you cannot legislate without going back to the people. There is no other place on earth where you have that kind of rubbish. Okay. So what I'm trying to put very clearly is that the people who are fighting the BPI had the one thing now that they want now to go take it to parliament. Now, I will tell you their code word. They are using the word consensus. Consensus with who? Let us go and mobilize to the referendum when it comes. Go and vote, you know. There is no need for those stories. Okay. Beraza? One, uh, I, I think in my personal view that uh, when the head of state claims that he's going to mount an epic legal battle in the Court of Appeal, I think it's not uh, a good thing to do. That is intimidating the courts, understanding that uh, all arguments that are taken to the court, regardless of uh, whether one wins or loses, are meant to develop our laws. And that uh, the head of state, uh, being uh, the head of one arm of government, should be able to be impartial. And they should look at the, the outcome of the court, not to see that uh, the matter has been properly judged beyond reasonable doubt, but just a balance of probabilities. If there is every likelihood that uh, some elements of the laws were not being followed, there is nothing wrong from uh, realigning uh, whatever we are doing as government, yeah. what the courts have said. That is part of developing the law, and that is part of being patriotism yeah. and, and respecting the rule of law, because yeah. Kenya is not going anywhere. Now, the court said that uh, the BBI process was kick-started by President Uhuru Kenyatta and Araila Molodinga something that makes uh, the process not to qualify to be within um, uh, the root of popular initiative. Yeah. And uh, if we have realized that some of these things, we can actually ch amend them yeah. uh, through a two-thirds majority in parliament. I think that is a good thing to do. We are simply rerouting the BBI roadmap from the popular initiative 
to a parliamentary process which is much more simpler yeah. within the budget that the members of parliament are paid as salaries. We will have no any other issues going around the, uh, around the country. We are grappling with, uh, with the COVID-19 pandemic now. We are, there are no social gatherings. We, so if you are going to open the country to, uh, that Kenyans are going to queue in the polling centers to vote for, I think we'll be endangering the Kenyans. Kenya as a country not going anywhere. 70% of the contents of BBI touches on some policy things. We can begin implementing those things, even uh, the 35% of, uh, of, uh, of revenue going to counties. We can begin to do it. So we must begin to demonstrate yeah. that uh, the contents of BBI can be implemented by ourselves by beginning to practice them, even as we await yeah. to anger them into law. All right. Mongagi? In the interest of time, yeah. unless there is something executive and the parliamentarians here are not telling Kenyans, uh, I'm concerned about the time. Yeah. In terms of uh, going to court, uh, securing the BBI, um, and uh, coming to Kenyans to say now we are back on track. Yeah. Unless we, the, when I say there is something they are not telling us, maybe they are planning to maybe add another one year or two years. In terms of time, yeah. I think the, 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 my proposal and my thinking is uh, let Parliament move forward with, uh, with doing what they can do yeah. and uh, let also the judicial process continue uh, so that we don't lose both. Yeah. Because it is important to do some reviews in, t in some of these uh, in some of these uh, sections of our of our of our constitution, and uh, like someone said, you know, uh, President John Kennedy in 1961 uh, during his inauguration, he said, uh, "Ask not what your country can do for you, mm. but ask what you can do for your country." I think that aspect of life is, uh, in the majority of us, particularly political leadership, we are missing yeah. that point. Uh, if we put the country first, yeah. uh, we will not uh, be arguing about some of these things. Okay. Because uh, sincerely, you know, and it's in the law, you cannot amend, you cannot hold a referendum yeah. uh, one year to election. Uh, we, after tom uh, tomorrow is June. So we have only June and uh, July. Unless now we want to say simply because uh, simply because BBI uh, is being pushed uh, by certain people yeah. or certain leaders, it must be had on a priority basis uh, irrespective of whether the court has other, 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 other schedules or not, yeah. uh, within two months, for sure. And uh, again, look at the, the IEBC. It doesn't have, uh, uh, as per the ruling of the other day, uh, the commissioners, yeah. uh, we need to fill uh, the commissioners who are not there. Uh, they need also to acquaint themselves yeah. with the with the with the, um, the, the, the electoral processes uh, in IEBC. Surely, how uh, I'm concerned about yeah. the timing. The timing. Uh, the timing. Okay. Well, but, but, you know, at the same time, yesterday, Nandi Senator, that Samson Tirarge, made a very categorical statement, said that this should not go through Parliament because Parliament is state captured. Do you agree with those sentiments? Mm, I think that's a dangerous statement in very many ways. Yeah. Uh, secondly, he is right because it is not about state capture. It's because he knows it is not easy to raise to that majority. He knows the machinations that have gone in. He knows that the group of MPs who are uh, talking about the parliamentary initiative or that one, I've told you again, they want to hijack the process. They are not driven by patriotism. They are driven by opportunism. They are uh, trying to do a coup on the Hakushik partner, specifically about uh, the Rai Laudinga and the, the Uhuru Kenyatta initiative, and they want to bring in their own. And I've told you, when you hear the one consensus, that's a Tangatanga philosophy. And when you have somebody talking about, he won't talk about BBI, then use consensus. 
that's not heresy. It, it, it doesn't work. It is not like that. It is a unrun line. They have been fighting it from day one. There is no time they have been calculated in their minds that this is a good idea for the country. You can hear actually the contradiction between my good friend Kimani Gujiri. He voted for this thing when we were with it in parliament. But today you find he, he doesn't have anything good to say about it. So that contradiction is the one I'm saying. The, the, the mindset. We do not want to have an issue where people are thinking that, oh, there's a problem with timelines. Timelines for what? This thing, even if it comes in August or September, it will not affect the date of election of August next year. There is nobody who has uh, muted the idea of uh, having election postponed. You cannot postpone a general election if it is uh, put in the Constitution as the, fifth, uh, as the first Tuesday of the fifth year of, uh, of, of, of August. And the reason being, you, you cannot have uh, an extension unless you have an, a declaration of war. There is no war as at the time. So a political an engagement or discourse like we are having cannot be a declaration of war where we can extend parliament. That is one. Let, Lastly, let, let, let me just on that. Let him, let him finish. Let him finish. Go ahead, Maury. Yeah, or the most important thing, there is this story of the 70 constituencies that people have been grappling around. There has been deliberate effort to misrepresent the whole idea in its context. The context in the sense that if you were to take to a referendum the, the, the allocation of the 70 constituencies into those counties, which is a bone of contention on the main, mostly the people who are fighting the hardship, they, because these constituencies were going to areas that are populous enough to be able to be awarded those constituencies. But those who want to politicize, they want to say, oh, no, you have a problem because every, constitu every, every, every county should have a constituency. They were not being dished out like bread because you are hungry. They were given out because of population. And in this one, if you go and allocate them in the, in, in the 28 constituencies, uh, counties that you are giving, yeah. the reason is population. If you take them through a referendum, surely you have not interfered with the NIEC duties. IEBC is a creature of the people. And the same people have taken over some duties that are supposed to be exercised by the IEBC, and they decided to exercise themselves by allocating where the constituencies are going to be. Okay. But among the signs and the words and other things will be done by IEBC. Okay. And the same IEBC they are not telling you was also said to be the same ruling to be the constitutional. Okay. So if it is not constituted properly, and even if you have an election in, yeah. in, in between, and they then say you have a problem of this one. That's one thing. We need people to be very honest. Okay. We, let's wait for the photo of appeal. Let's yeah. not, not have the pressure of timelines or with, with anybody. Okay. Honorable Mungiri, you know, the, the interesting thing about your voting was that it was perceived that you would vote no, but you voted yes. In fact, there were people who were saying you betrayed the deputy president who you are supporting. Let, let, let me ask you, because you have asked me that question. Where did the deputy president say yes or no? Where did he say yes or no? We agreed everybody should vote according to his mind, what he thinks about his constituency. That, that's what he said. He has never said yes or no. Because he cannot say yes or no because at the end of the day, he needs no and yes for 2022. But you see, the problem we're having is such people called Mayoka, Mayoka Maori. You know, saying that now, the people who are, who are opposing, now they have a problem for them coming. What kind of leadership that they were opposing and now they are coming, they are worried because of that. The other statement is saying that those people in the Tangataga -tanga, they are coming to hijack. Hijacking what? What is the statement? What is the English of hijacking? Does he understand what is hijacking? Hijacking the constitution to take it where? For what? The people who are supporting it, are they not Kenyans? These are the problems we're having with such people because we could have finished this thing, thing, thing long time ago. But the attitude they have, why are they coming now, surely? If we can see now this thing has come in the parliament and why I voted yes, when this thing came in the parliament, it's just like a woman coming on theater because the other process is finished. She wants to have a baby. Will I start doing the cases asking who pregnant you and who, did, you do, did you do engagement of the church? It is to do the operation first, to save the child and to save the mother. And that's how I voted, because it has come. They brought it in always, they brought it. I must make a decision. But when you see after you finish that, they go outside there and say, oh, now we have a number to impeach the deputy president. These are the problem of these people. 
We did not vote that so that they have a number. About 51 MPs of the deputy president voted yes. We have our independent mind. We have the constituency. I've, I, I tweeted my constituency and asked them, now this thing I've reached here, we are going to vote. Can you let me understand? How do you want me to take about? They said vote yes. Let me tell you, first is my, first is my family. Second is my constituency. The issue of Uhuru Kenyatta or Deputy President comes to that on my life. But the first thing is my family and my constituency. Because I'm elected by my constituency, I must listen what is the constituency is saying. I cannot go blindly, the way my brother had said here. I go being a psychophan and tomorrow I'll not be elected. Even if I'm helping somebody, even Deputy President, where we are going, I must be elected so that I can be able to, to help him. But this attitude yeah. of these people, some of this group, that's why they are making so things, many things hard. Because they just want to oppose. A question is saying, why now? What is this? Saying we are hijacking. Hijacking what? It's only a fool who cannot change his mind. But anybody can change his mind when we reach somewhere. Oh, let's not pass this road. Let's pass here. That's how we should accept the democracy okay. of individually because everybody is elected from where he came from. Yeah. And that's why you see, my friend, and uh, my brother have said here, let's come 2022. You see people who think they are championing, they will meet with Wajiko. And I'm telling you, they will not see the right of the parliament again. Okay. But as a, you also took a sabbatical from Tanga Tanga, yeah. are you still on a sabbatical? I, I, I think uh, before I come to that, uh, listening to what my good friend uh, Maoka Maore is saying, uh, it depends out the problem that we have, one of the problems that we have in this country, yeah. and why Parliament is never independent. Yes. Uh, you know, he's the, de he's the lead of, he's a deputy leader of minority. Majority whip. Majority, majority, majority leader, majority, majority whip. And uh, you know the, that position, if he takes a contrary opinion to what the president has taken, tomorrow he will be whipped, de whipped. So not unless we make uh, these positions uh, to have some kind of security of tenure, that parties will meet on the after elections and they will elect the leadership. And once they have elected the leadership, unless that, if that leader resigns or dies, yeah. uh, he will hold that position until the end of the term of parliament. I think he will say the difference. The problem is that uh, we take positions to appease our superiors, even if we know ourselves that we are not right. Yeah. You know? Parliament has a, got every right to amend any law. So there is nothing like, like, like hijacking. And even if, we, even if the, the members of parliament are hijacking the, the, the handshake, you know, uh, from Uhuru and Raila Odinga, and it's for the common good, and it's a good thing to do it, so be it. Doesn't matter which lens you're, you're wearing to see it. Because we are saying that uh, members of parliament are paid to legislate. They are paid to amend the existing laws, to bring in new amendments, and the fact that we are able to marshal, uh, uh, that the parliament wa wa was able to come in in full swing and raise two thirds to vote for the BBI, uh, to vote for, uh, for the BBI, I think we should encourage them to come together. And we are not uh, saying that uh, the members of parliament who are forming uh, that IPPG kind of are only coming from this particular divide, we are willing to sit down and negotiate and ensure that uh, the composition is above board, the represents the face of Kenya, so that we can give what is good for this country. I would want to see a situation where members of parliament will be able to support something on the basis of their concerns, yes. not on the basis of the position taken by a party leader. Exactly. or the President of the Republic of Kenya. Yeah. We are doing great disservice to President Uhuru Kenyatta by just supporting things that uh, Uhuru uh, Mugai Kenyatta wants, even if we know that we can improve his line of thinking further and, uh, and uh, bring better governance in this country. Okay. Mugai, you haven't answered the question on sabbatical, but we we'll answer that. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me address the issue of state capture. Yeah. I haven't been much keen on what is happening in Kenya, but I will say uh, about a few points, and I leave viewers to, to charge, to make a judgment if that is happening in Kenya or not. In uh, where you are talking of state capture, uh, I believe is where 
a few individuals, whether in the government or uh, outside the government, yeah. have influence of whatever is happening in uh, government for their own private gain. Yeah. Uh, where in any country, particularly developing world, Kenya included, uh, if, if, for example, for, in, for example, an inspector general of police, or in that matter, anybody who is heading police, uh, takes direct, directives from any office to execute his or her duties, whether in line with the constitution or not. If that is happening, then there is state capture. In a, in a country where there is parliament, uh, and by the way, a disclaimer, I a little bit disagree with, uh, with, uh, with my friend, uh, Honorable Baraza. There is no democratic country ever in the world uh, where uh, parties do not take position as far as uh, decisions in parliament are concerned. Always as an elected member and a particular political organization, you must heed what that political organization's leaders, leadership is saying. After, it is believed, after discussing and coming to an agreement, support that position. I'm not talking about a particular leader here. I'm talking of a, a party's decision. Uh, but where for a parliament to execute a mandate, you must wait for a call from somewhere. Then uh, there is an aspect of state capture. Number three, uh, where there is no respect for institutions. Yeah. Uh, institutions are like independent commissions, independent public entities, uh, where there is, they do not have an independent dependent mind to operate, then you, you can describe that particular scenario as a state capture. So in this case, in Kenya, yeah. people will, uh, I leave viewers to see if we have a state capture in Kenya or not. Yeah. Yes. All right. But, but I just wanted uh, to inform my good friend Mangangi that, uh, yes, it's good for parties to take a position. Mm -hmm. But those positions, you must have a process of arriving at a party's position. Exactly. Okay. The organs of the party must meet. And even when they are meeting, they mm -hmm. can also engage the general public. So that you are coming at the decision that is for the common good for the country. But not in Kenya where a secretary general wakes up in the morning and uh, says this is the party position. Said by who? So it's a that is an affront to democracy. And an affront to the development of a democratic space clever. in this country. Okay. Uh, yeah, let me bring in Dr. Nikal. Dr. Nikal is joining us on phone now. We apologize for the slight technical hitch there. Dr. Nikal, are you with us? The issue of state capture and uh, party position. Yes. I think the most important thing that comes out is the party processes. Correct. If, uh, if there's an issue, uh, the party should actually sit down, uh, even in emergency situations, but in these situations, this is our uh, this is our position, and if there is a disagreement, that disagreement should be at the party level, and those who feel they really uh, will go against it must take it very clearly at that point. Once it has been reached, then uh, it is a party position, and it is important for cohesion of parties that those are taken. Uh, individuals, then, if they feel so strongly, uh, uh, they feel so strongly differently, express that. But of course, when they do that, then the party issues to come with it. If we say they, 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 there's a state capture, you see, then that will link to the party that is, is, is ruling at the time. Because if that is the only party, that will have a state structure. Other parties, will still have position. I don't think then you can call those state capture. If the party yeah, is there, those ruling, then that, that's not. In my view, I don't see a state capture here. A uh, hundred members said uh, respect for institutions. That's paramount, uh, really, uh, if, if, if you have courts and so on to 
go by what the court says. If you don't agree with what the court says, whether it is the state or a party, there are procedures that are followed uh, to appeal those, those situations. So I think we must not really mistake uh, party issues uh, with, 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 with state capture. It actually, uh, on, the, on, on a party that is ruling, to be extremely careful that that is not seen, that a party position is not seen as a state position. I think that's all I say for that. Okay. But there's something I've seen, eh? I've seen no, something. No, something let, let him finish. By, by, by the let him finish. Yeah. Just finish up. Yeah. No, what happened there? Eh? We have a very interesting story we are the, the introducing today. Okay. The story of state capture doesn't arise. Or it, it, it should not be a subject of debate in what we are talking about. Being, if you've listened to what Honorable Mwangangi has uh, put forward about discipline in the party, it is, I think, the first democracy in the world, if you could call it democracy, whereby you go to an election, you get elected, and immediately you get elected, as a member of parliament, you, you switch and they decide that you are not part of the government that you got elected in, but you have decided to switch loyalty to something else. And I, I want to just explain quickly what I mean. When I, I we finished the 2017 election, no, the quite chunk of the Jubilee members of parliament decided they want to support the deputy president. Yeah. And then when they, and they are very eloquent about it, but what they have never defined or refined is to support him to do what? Because actually the 2017 to 2022 election is the tenure where the president gets his legacy. And the, everybody who is elected with him from the deputy president to the MCA are supposed to help him achieve his legacy. And then upon that one, you can now go and do an election. If it is the deputy president gets elected, you can now come and form a government and now implement those policies or agendas that you want the deputy president uh, to do. Okay. okay. And a big chunk of us actually have gone into it yeah. And they've gone into it one year, this is the fourth year, and the people are calling it other names. It's not a state capture. It's actually bad money. It has happened, it is unfortunate, and it has actually wasted Jubilee government's agenda and caused confusion, everything. And when we just point at these things that these people are gone astray, they think that we are being arrogant from what my brother Kimani is saying. Even when I'm praising him, he doesn't, he also actually mistakes that I'm attacking him. And I voted. I was just saying he was very magnanimous. He saw the BBI was a good idea and he voted for it. And then about this, this, this other fight on it is the ones I also don't understand, so the viewers can see. Let, I think, uh, I think uh, let, let me, there is something. Let, let me add something there. Dr. Nikal. Oh, yes, honestly, if you are in a party and this, the, you, you, will, you have your structures within the party, how you resolve issues, you still bring them. You should actually follow that. What, what sometimes happens is that when people are in the party and then particularly if it's a coalition, then one coalition feels uh, dissatisfied, then they now want to go what again the bigger coalition is, but they still want to remain in that coalition because of say, the position they hold, electoral positions and so on. Yeah. I think that's not fair. When people feel that at this time yeah. we cannot be in this party, just come out. There was a good okay. place, I think it started in 1966, around that time, when people could cross the floor of parliament from one side without actually seeking the yeah. mandate of the electorate. The okay. law was changed, and now the, the, the laws that exist in the political party are. There are certain things that if you do, and you go against the party, the party can take action against you, and there are even processes with that. So I think people should not, uh, there is any structure, any organization, will have ways it does things. If you are part of that organization, really you have accepted those ways. Okay. You but know, first we have to define what is step, st state capture yeah. in the context of uh, parliament, the way Mwangangi has said. And this is basically where the party leader or the head of state directs how parliament should operate without using the party organs. Yeah. That is dictatorship and that is uh, state capture. You know, where the head of state, even if he's the party leader, he is more superior and more powerful than the party organs themselves. 
in a, demo, in a democracy, it never works that way. In a democracy, the, the party organs are more powerful. They can even meet to remove the, 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 the president of the party leader. They can even summon the, the, the party leader uh, if they feel that the, the head of state is not working in, in, in line with the, with the, with the, with the party uh, policies and manifesto. But what is happening in this country is not what is happening in South Africa. What is happening in this country is what is happening in, the, in China, in the Communist Party. What is happening in this country is completely dictatorship and the state capture, okay. where the party leader directs how the voting should be done, directs how members of parliament should toe the line, and those who don't toe the line, they are removed mm -hmm. from positions mm -hmm. without, mm -hmm. without exploring the party yeah. structures to be able to come mm -hmm. up with a party position. Okay, good Jiri. Let me ask on that. Yeah? No, no, Dr. Nikal, hold on. Hold on no, one there's second. One thing, there's yeah. one thing we need to understand. If, yeah. if the leader of the party is not in the head of state, then what? Dr. Uh, Nikal, hold on one second. We'll come to you in just yes. a bit. Gujiri. Well, there's something I want to respond there, supporting my brother, what he's saying here. Yeah. And I would, I would say there's a difference of Jubilee and ODM. ODM, I appreciate them. Yeah. If there's something you hear them caucusing, they meet, they talk, yeah. and they say this is the position. And they say this is the position of the party. Even in the parliament, they do that. And they appreciate them so much. They go in their offices, they discuss, they agree, they, are, they disagree, but they take party position. Yeah. Then they come with it in the parliament. But what Mauka is saying, there's nothing like that in Jibiri. Nothing. Nothing. And I ask him, yeah. why should we have the people they are calling Tanga Tanga with the deputy president? We meet 145 MPs. Can't you see there's a problem? Out of 175, uh, 72, I think so. Yeah? When 145, they are not fools. There must be something. There must be a problem. When they take the position of saying to you, he is the Secretary General. He just wake up. Even the President is not here. We have not even discussed anything. Say that the Deputy President should not attempt to go in that office of Jibri. Party leader. Who is, that is very serious. That is a thing need to be discussed from the grassroots, from the members of Parliament, so that we can be able to agree. Okay. So I would say there is a difference of ODM how they operate, yeah. and there is a difference of the GBD, how it operates. Okay. And again, I'll let Maoka Maori, I'm not changing, I voted yes. But I'm with dependent in mind. I did not vote yes, I come to be a psychophant. No, I voted on my conscience and my people of Bahati, what they told me. But I'm not dictator person, not reason the people of Bahati. So if they are waiting for me, you think that I'm changing now to be a psychophant on their side, my friend. Even the 50 MPs, 51, who voted yes, my friend. And you went and said, now you have a number, you can impeach the deputy president. My friend, it's not that. Try to impeach me. Try to impeach me. Yeah. Just, just let me finish. Maori, let me finish. Just bring that impeachment. Yeah. It's when, again, you see the independent mind of the people in the parliament. Okay. It's when you'll be able to know no. how it works. All right. So we should go slowly and respect and, we, and talk to each other. But not in the, that those bad language on thinking that now we are changing, now we are on this side. No, no, no. All right. We should come together and agree All right. and disagree. Okay. And I respect ODM because of that. All right, That's gentlemen, I have to take a quick break. First of all, then we'll come back and wind up on this conversation. I see a lot of your feedback coming through. We'll sample some of them right after this.